so you have one day of downtime at the Rory Crossroads until you have to meet at midday uh, the North Gate. You have to meet with the Kingsguard, uh, where you will be part of a group, a series of groups, I should say, who are going out to hunt the Harpies. Randall yeah. mentioned uh, you're meeting at midday because that is when the Harpies are the least active, because Harpies tend to be quick to flee when faced with a lot of danger. You are all... Uh, the the Kingsguard is assembling a number of groups to kind of take them all out at once. So you have a day of downtime to do whatever you want. It's You are in a larger city now uh, than Melt, of course. This is probably in the size of cities within the northern reaches this is this is a larger one the the capital city being the largest the the seats of the state here being the mid to large cities and then you know everything else kind of in between so there there's plenty to be done in the city there's plenty of fun to be had there's plenty of trouble to have got to be got into uh vices to be indulged in and potentially uh, day's work if you want to hire on as a hired hand for a day. And plenty of people to rob. And plenty of people to rob should you choose to attempt to. Also, a uh, very decent sized police force <laughs> to prevent you from doing so. What would you like to do? I guess I we should probably just go downstairs, talk to the bartender, see if they have any any news, any rumors, leads and stuff? Okay. Uh, you go downstairs. Uh, is it, are you, like, first thing in the morning? Yeah. Yeah, once I wake up. Yeah. All right. You go downstairs. Uh, you go down to the, to the bottom floor of the Blooming Cedar, which is all bar and restaurant and entertainment space. Uh, there is a small stage, and there is a courtyard with a with a cedar tree that is blooming. It is not the time of year for cedars to be blooming. Uh, it is early spring. It is almost. It is one week away from spring. You are you are nine days away from the official start of spring. Uh, did Alphonse come downstairs with me? What's the what's the situation right now? What's going on? Yeah, let, let's. I'll be downstairs with you. Okay. That's good, because Illicol does not like talking to people. That means I have to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> so I guess I gesture over at one of the waiters, and I I request a table for the two of us. Request. All right, uh, another young gentleman, younger, probably between 13 and 16, uh, like early teens, early to mid-teens, approaches and goes, absolutely, sir. I will have you seated just one second. Uh, how many? Th three, just... two, but three. <laughs> we'll see. Two, but three. I will give you a table for two, but three. Thank you. <laughs> and so he runs over and he he finds a table that was suitable for two, but three. Uh, <laughs> it is it is a three-person table. It's a, it's a larger round table. Uh, in the in the industry, they call it a two but three table. I know yeah, it is. I, it is I know actually what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so, and he whisks away one of the chairs out of the back, and he, he comes up and he says, "Follow me, please. It's right over here." And he takes you over to a table uh, that is that is suitable for two but three or three but two. Uh, and it is it is by one of the front windows. You can see the early light of sun coming in through the window and he, he gestures for you to seat, be seated. If either of you were feminine, he probably would pull out the chair. It seems like it is that kind of place. Uh, but as you are not, he just, he stands by waiting for you to seat yourselves. And he says, what can I interest you in for uh, breakfast? We have a, a breakfast or a brunch menu. Uh, we do serve alcohol in the morning. We do have a mix of uh, uh, barreled orange juice and we mix that with champagne. We call it a mimosa. Uh, we're the only ones in town who do it. Oh my uh, god, this place is going to be so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you guys are we also, screwed. We also have fresh tap. 
uh, water. It is originally spring fed. It is uh, nice and ice cold and refreshing. We also have uh, various meads, ales, and wines that you could have with your breakfast as well as uh, freshly brewed coffee and tea. The chef special this morning is a fresh baked biscuit with uh, some wild boar bacon and two eggs, however you would like it cooked. Uh, although we also have oatmeal and uh, some griddle cakes that uh, they're just nice and sweet. We have a little bit of maple syrup with them. Um, this is Theo. They said that meals were included in our with meals our room, right? Yes. Oh okay. yeah. In, okay, so we're fine. Purchase, yeah, we're good. We're good. As uh, people who have stayed here, you do and in get included a meal. I will take your finest brew of coffee, please. Thank you. And uh, the chef special sounds perfect. Finest brew of coffee, one chef special. And for you, sir? I will take a mimosa and the chef special as well, please. Chef special and one mimosa. Absolutely. I will be uh, right back. I'll put your orders in and I'll be back with your drinks. And, and, and one moment. Yourself. You oh. didn't happen to notice a hooded individual skulking around the the outside of the of the establishment this morning would you if you if you did could you please uh give them a shout <laughs> i slide him a copper as in like please go look outside and find my friend for me i will <laughs> look for a hooded individual to see if they are outside and should there be a hooded individual outside i will know that you are requesting their presence Thank you. And the, the copper is gone. It is into a deep <laughs> pocket somewhere, and he he goes off towards the um. He goes off towards the bar. Puts in an order. He goes to the front door. You see him step outside. Looks <laughs> around. <laughs> I don't know if Pilot is out there. Aren't I on the roof? As far as I That's know, the last you, time we yeah. checked, you were on the roof. I am currently on the roof. <laughs> there is no hooded individual outside. He. Well, there might be. <laughs> there might Just be. A Let's see. Let's see. Really hoping for a um, random. Also, a, a copper is really not that much. Like, I'm just imagining you, like, sliding a loony to someone as a bribe. <laughs> you gave him a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> um, there is There apparently is not a hooded individual outside. Uh, he comes back in, and he uh, walks back over to the bar, collects two beverages, one on a saucer with a cup. Another is a long champagne glass uh, looks to be filled with orange juice and <laughs> sets sets down the coffee in front of you, Alphonse, and the mimosa in front of you, Illicol, and says, uh, no hooded individuals outside. Shame. Thank you. Uh, truly. And he like goes on about, about waiting other tables, taking care of other people. I'm glad he looked. I really wasn't expecting him to look. <laughs> Quick you tipped question. him. You asked him to. I mean, it, he's probably dealt with worse requests, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Within a few minutes, uh, two chef specials are brought out. It appears to be freshly baked biscuits, um, like a light honey glaze on top. Very fancy. Very nice, like very nice, like bed and breakfast style. Bacon and eggs. Uh, you did not say how you wanted your eggs cooked, so he just kind of took the liberty. They are both sunny side up. Two right. That sounds perfect. I would have sent it back if anything else. <laughs> perfect. Mm. Uh, so as we're eating, um, Alphonse just kind of looks over at Illicol. She's like, so I've told you a little about myself, and we've been on the road for quite some time. Illicol, what's your story? Kegelo, you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Only as I much simply... as you'd like to share. I simply travel. I, I go where the wind takes me. I, I have a home in the mountains to the south that I visit, but for now I am content to explore. Now, now, there must be more to that. What drives you, Ilika? Uh, what drives you? What pushes your buttons? Why are you here? Well, I told you my... My mother was a mage, yes? Yes. Yes, I've, I've always felt the, that same draw, but magic is not common among my tribe, among the Goliaths. So I, I suppose I'm hoping to learn more, become 
more worldly, but I, d I don't know what drives me. Well, sometimes I guess the wind will do. Um, and then I guess I, I, I pull out my the book that I bought yesterday. Yep. It is a um, a red spell book. It is not like crimson. It is it is like red, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a brighter shade. And I, I say I'm not sure if you're much of a study, but if you ever wanted to review this old tome, Ooh. more than happy to tome. to share. I nod and say, "Thank you." Meanwhile, on the roof, Pilot, you have collected uh, not one furry friend, but now there are three. <laughs> nice. Uh, which appear to be there. There are three, not not wild, but um, what's the word? Strays, yes, or uh, feral. Feral. That's the one I wanted. Uh, there are three feral cats who have uh, throughout the night uh, so you were first joined by the tabby and two others joined you throughout the night while you lay still and you were surrounded by three new friends. The sun has risen the, the, the town uh, the city I should say has been active all night as it is a larger city. There's been city noise. There have been drunkards and fights and running and bustling and carts and some animals and all that all the noises of the city have occurred uh, throughout the night as you have rested uh, and now you have three sweet friends uh, there's one torty and uh, one calico have joined the tabby that uh, was here with you can I or can I try to pet them yes um, they are there is an animal handling skill there is an animal handling skill um, make an animal handling check that's a that's a seven the tabby reacts uh, very well to you uh, allows you to pet her uh, the other two when you go to pet them they kind of do that like it's not not right now I'm a, I'm a cat. I decide when you can pet me. And so they just kind of do that duck up, duck away and kind of like back off thing and just kind of look at you. And then when you like leave them alone, they still come like right up to you and kind of sit next to you. Okay. But they don't appear to want to be petted right now. Um, how far is it? How hard is it for me to climb back into room 47? Uh, I mean, you got up here fairly easy. It is on the fourth floor. So it is just, it is like, the the um, the roof kind of slopes out. You have to make it like an inward climb a little bit, as there is also, a little bit of an overhang. I did close the window. The window is closed, so you will have to uh, climb down and break in the window. Or you could go over the roof and into the center, and then swing in to the overlooking balcony, overlooking the courtyard inside, and you would be inside the hotel or the inn, but not inside of room forty-seven. No, I need to get into room 47. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure Alphonse closed the window last night when I was like, uh, pilot, so blame him. You know, I might close the window. That is, there is, you have tools for that. I will try to get back into room 47. Mission impossible, okay. let's go. <laughs> uh, first, make an acrobatics check to see if you can get down to the window. Acrobatics is an 18. It is more than enough. Uh, you kind of slide down off and you hang off of the the overhang of the roof and you do a little swing, swing, hop, and then you kind of land and grip the uh, window on the edges. Your feet plant on uh, That's the architecture. Like a Swedish bed and breakfast kind of mm. thing. Like, you know, like they have like, all the, like, wooden bits. Yeah. Uh, kind of plant toesies right on that, uh, and you can you can your hands can be free, but you got to kind of stay really close, and you got to kind of keep your waist tucked out a little bit because the sill's right there. Uh, but you can uh, first, well, you could check to see if the window is locked. I can guess I try to open it. Pull in the window, and they did not lock the window last night. All right, let's slip inside. And open the window, and you hop the sill, and you are in room forty-seven. 
as far as you're aware. Um, did they leave anything behind? Did they leave anything behind? Did they? Nope. No. The, okay, there is uh, nothing left behind. May or may not be room 47. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, one of the beds looks like a very large individual slept in it last night, so potentially, yes, room 47. Appears to be. Are there any um, one of those like room service snacks? Snacks? The... Yeah, like uh, you know, like if you go into a fancy hotel, sometimes they have like snacks like chocolate there. on the pillow. You just want to feed the cat. Yeah, <laughs> I do want to feed the cat. There, there is not. There, there is no. Oh. It is not that fancy of an inn. It is a. It is a moderate inn. the The restaurant does really good business though. Um. And the fourth floor might be the least nice room. Okay, so assuming they've all went down to eat breakfast. That would be a good assumption. I or they're you. invisible. Totally That's possible. Funny. I mean, okay. I am a wizard. I can't believe I'm doing this. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I go down to find Ilkal and Alphonse. Okay. You <laughs> down the stairs. Yep. Da -da 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 -da. Um, but, but, um, when I see them, okay. I see their breakfast. They were eating breakfast, yes. Uh, and you said that they had like bacon. Yes, they do have bacon. I go to Alphonse's plate. Yep. Take a part of a bacon. <laughs> Head back to room 47 and climb back out the window. I mean, I noticed you, right? <laughs> Were you uh, saying didn't Alphonse. do a sleight of hand? Yeah, no, so... I... I, I love this. Alphonse, as you were sitting there engrossed in Illichal's, uh backstory, learning about Illichal's, uh mage mother and uh, his intent to find magic, uh, as you offer to uh, do you allow for the borrowing of a spell book, I guess. You didn't you didn't offer to teach exactly. You just kind of was like, ah, oh, you know, maybe we can talk about some magic. You were facing away. It'll call, you see, as you were telling this, Ronald just walks up behind, from from behind, uh, and you're, you're finishing the conversation. Ronald just kind of walks up, looks at uh, the breakfast. Uh, you two both notice Ronald. Ronald reaches out, takes a slice of bacon off of your plate, breaks it, and turns around to go in the other, to leave. I forgot about the Ronald. <laughs> I forgot until right now. And Ronald is is heading. Does, back does Alphonse notice? Upstairs. Alphonse, yeah. yeah, Alphonse, like just he, Ronald just kind of walks up, just kind of stands, like <laughs> doesn't walk up and stand there for a second. Walks up, looks at your plate, takes a piece of bacon, breaks it, pulls it in half, sets half back down, and then. Is is back going back the way they came? Good old strange Ronald. <laughs> that what... was strange. Yes. Yes, that was very strange. <laughs> I just Ronald, want to feed the cats. Going up. I'm sure if you would have asked. Stairs, second floor. <laughs> yeah, I would have given you bacon. Third floor. Fourth floor. Room 47, which the door is still open. You did not close it. It was it was room 47. Yep. You try to get back on the roof? Make a uh, acrobatic check to get on the roof. That's a 19. Plenty. Uh, Damn it, I wanted you to fall. <laughs> Just add you, to this story. You do <laughs> have a a mouth. You you've consumed you've consumed for. Aiken in in between what would be lips. It's metallic. In place. Out onto the windowsill. Hop. Grab. Pull up. Press. Up onto the roof. Uh, one of the cats is left. But the uh, the tabby and the uh, calico are still there. So I guess the tortie left. I, I rip the ripped bacon in half and gently toss it to their jo okay. gently toss it to them and then I wait to see if they eat it. They look look around. 
sniff. And they kind of look out and they do that like cat thing where they like they sniff it, and they go to eat it, and then they like back away from it, and then they go to eat it, and they both do eat the bacon. Nice. And then I just sit there and wait till Alphonse and Ilk will come back out of the bar. No, I don't. <laughs> you I, climb I, onto the roof. <laughs> I just I look at the city on the roof okay. to try to get a rough outline of the city. Okay, that is a good plan. Uh, as you were looking at the city, uh, from where you were sitting, as you look straight out across the square, you can see the lake, uh, and you can see what appears to be the, the fisherman's district or the fishery district. To your right, uh, across the to Pentagon, the square is still squares. I hate it. Um, you see a park, uh, which appears to have some greenery and things. Uh, further to your right, which is further south, you see a large temple turning like completely around as like you, you're getting a feel for the city there are two districts which appear to be housing uh looking straight back across the square looking to your left which is north you see the market district and then behind you to the north you see the state the seat of the stadier and his the the fortifications that are the seat of the stadier which is uh where you were earlier and it appeared that district uh where you where you talked to the king's guard and that that district appeared to be just mostly military and uh, provincial uh, provinces. That would be even better. Um, provincial stuff, uh, govern govern government buildings, uh, like an armory, a few other barracks, things like that. But you get a general idea of what the city looks like, but you do not get uh, like specific stuff. Yeah. Downstairs, the two of you begin to finish breakfast. Yeah, uh, Alphonse, you have one less than. Sorry, you have half a slice less uh, bacon than Ilikal did. The, your breakfast goes otherwise uneventful. <laughs> That's fairly eventful, to be fair. I would not I know. call that uneventful. Yeah, that was that was the most rest of your meal breakfast yet. goes uneventful. <laughs> um, of note, it appears like. While to you, Ronald didn't sneak into the the uh, the restaurant area, the tables or anything, uh, appear to sneak. Looks like nobody took note of Ronald just walking and taking your bacon and leaving. What would you like to do? Is there a job board in this uh, area? There, uh, from what you can tell, is not a job board in this restaurant area. Uh, you could ask the waiter. Uh, perhaps he would know where you could uh, potentially find some work for travelers uh, who are potentially looking on to take a day, take on a day's work. But there does not appear to be a job board in this inn. This is a little little more highbrow than that. It appears to be a traveler's inn or a mid to upper class inn. Okay. No job postings. How do I want to approach this? So I guess I, I, I wave the, the waiter down and I, I'm like, good sir. Yes? Is there an establishment in Rury Crossroads where one might gamble over some cards? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, someone who uh, likes to indulge in their vices, I see. Uh, yes, actually. There is in the Western District a uh, small inn that uh, runs a little bit of a lower brow people might call it a gambling ring but uh, as it is fairly secure uh, those who like to indulge in their vices can find some gambling to be had there it is uh, the two sided coin so if you go uh, if you follow the western road out to the wall south two blocks and then into the city one block. It is a uh, 
larger. It, from the outside, it appears to be uh, a larger house or a set of townhouses, but it is all one establishment. And there you could potentially indulge that particular vice. That's perfect. Thank you so much for the information. I guess, uh, cool. yeah, perfect. So, and he, he looks at, uh, look all the big guys. And you <laughs> look like you could handle a fight. Uh, perhaps, you know, maybe if you were looking to brawl or something, maybe uh, the backside of the two-sided coin has a special basement entrance <laughs> that uh, belies how large the room is uh, below. And maybe, not, not that I would know, of course, uh, there is some gambling or brawling to be had there. It'll call just nods. All right. I know what we're doing today. Uh, <laughs> kind of read my mind. He is like, uh, and this guy, like I said, he is like mid teens. Uh, make as he as he's like telling you that. Make a perception check. You both, you both can, should you wish. Hmm. Uh, I got that one. I got a twenty-one, one. so I got you covered. Tw twenty-one will notice. <laughs> um. Not a nap. As he is your yes, as your uh, waiter is. A, he is less put together than the bartender, uh, but what you do notice is he does have uh, his sleeve slips as he's taking away your plates, and it appears he has a tattoo on the underside of his arm, on the underside of his like forearm. And uh, you notice the upper portion of his left cheek on his left cheekbone actually appears to have makeup on it. It appears he's hiding a bruise. Oh, God. Uh, can I... The grab his wrist you, and you can <laughs> I, I don't know where I'm going with this but I, I, I reach out and I grab his wrist and to just kind of like, like huh? can yes is there anything of like like anything that would make sense to somebody who's not in the know about this tattoo like I mean he's got a he's, he's wearing like a collared like right. a shirt shirt right so like you would have to like I'm, like Harry Potter, end of Harry Potter and Goblet of Fire, like tear up his tear up his sleeve. Like so, uh, I know you feel it, Severus. Assume it's like I'm assuming it's like a really tight fit. I'm just gonna like pull his arm in just a little bit, just see if it like if it gives a little bit. But like my so from from his point of view, I'm just pulling him in to give him an extra tip. But I'm just trying I don't to get think a, that's what he's thinking. I'm trying to get a look at this tattoo and just to see if there's actually something legit going on in this location. Um. Make a deception check. All right. You are going to have to... You will have to tip him, too. <laughs> uh, that's a 12. Okay. 12 equals 12. Uh, tie goes to the player. Nice. Uh, he... Does, as you... What do you hand him? What level of... A silver. Oh, okay. Uh, as you take it, uh, you do... It, it slides up a little bit. It doesn't up like from what you can tell like even with his sleeve slipped up a little bit it just appears to be uh a few like just lines like you can't like it, it's still up into his sleeve it's not like it's not like a yakuza tattoo okay like it is just a it might be i don't know it might be half of his forearm at most in length uh but just on the edge of what is just barely peeking out it just appears to be a few lines like in a wavy three lines kind of wavy uh, you, you hand him you, you you pull his arm in real quick and you say you, you thank him mm -hmm. for such good service and advice and you palm him a, a full silver piece precisely and he says he, like very stunning he goes you absolutely uh, you are most welcome sir and silver piece gone and okay. he said yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, and he goes on about about his work shift. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> so uh, I turn over to Ilical and I'm like, "Are we up for some activities today?" I guess as far I'm... as I know, nothing just happened because I rolled a crit <laughs> fail. So you did. I just I, I nod. 
All right. I'm down. Okay. So I guess we will uh, head outside of the... Uh... Do we want to try to retrieve Pilot? Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure he'll see us when we go outside. Okay. I guess we, we just step outside. I casually spark my pipe as I normally do. Because essentially, yep. you, us I Pilot is very responsive to smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> It's our it's our it's our bat signal. <laughs> okay, do I yeah. smell the smoke? I don't know. I don't know how you do. <laughs> no. You just jumped uh, last time. You did a backflip. Uh <laughs> pilot, as you were taking in the city, you step back from I don't know how well you do. You you do notice as you're taking on this taking in the city. Illicall all <laughs> excuse me. Illicall and Alphonse do leave the inn within a few within a few minutes small conversation later are the cats friendlier to me now uh yeah the two that you fed uh they love you a lot the the um the tabby already liked you uh but now you have fed her uh therefore you are a new best friend uh as much so as like a, a wild feral cat in a city can be like they've been fed by other people so like they know, like, hey, oh, okay, this person's cool. And uh, the Calico is a lot more friendly now as well. If I hold my hand out, will the Tabby climb onto my shoulder? No. The Tabby no. is not trained. It is just friendly. Okay, that's fair. I, if it let, if the little Tabby lets me, I will give it a scritch. Yes, it does. It is acceptable. And... I hope that it will be here later. Who knows? And I, um, are there any rocks or debris on the roof of the building? There are not. It is the oh. tallest building among the surrounding buildings, and there are no, there's no trees or anything as it's in the city. Okay. Not even a loose shingle? You could investigate to see if there is a loose shingle. I'll do that. All right, make an investigation check. That's a four. You do <laughs> not. You kick around and kick around and kick around. You know nothing about roofing. Uh, okay. There is, and there's not a loose shingle based on what you see. All right. Fine. I um. I'll just gracefully climb down the wall and meet up with Alphonse and Illicol. I was gonna try to put out Alphonse's um pipe with um. a rock. <laughs> yeah. That, I, that, I, okay. Uh, you do. Uh, it is a four-story building, mm -hmm. and you're gonna climb down the the front of the building. Is on the town square. I will do the side. Where the, it's less noticeable. Okay. <laughs> uh, the opposite side uh, empties down into an alley. So you, you walk a, around the building, uh, make an acrobatics check to climb down. Uh, that's a 15. That is perfectly acceptable. Uh, you climb down the back into the alley. You are now on the opposite side of the inn from the town square. It is a it's a small alley. Uh, you're between appears to be like a house and the inn. You walk around to the front of the building and you will be greeted by Illicol and Alphonse. Nice. Hello again. There it is. <laughs> Ronald, how was the bacon? Greasy. Indeed it was. Not to give anything <laughs> away. Um... <laughs> Well, you're not. You don't know anything, right? No, as, as pretty much no. <laughs> yeah, weirdo Ronald. Yeah, Ronald being Dude, Ronald. Only half a slice of bacon. Ronald one. Ronald slept on the roof. Two. Ronald stole a piece of half a piece of bacon, and uh, Ronald is joining you now. Um, Illicol says, Ronald, you know, if you need anything. You can always ask me. You have been nothing but kind to me. I can always spare some food for you. All right. 
I, I appreciate that you know the same from me as you displayed in the, in the restaurant this morning. We were speaking with the waiter inside, Ronald, and it appears that there may be a establishment on the west side of town uh, that is suited to both mine and Ilkal's ability just to earn a little bit of coin. I find myself very handy with a deck of cards. And Ilakal, being Ilakal, is very suited to the fist. <laughs> uh, would you like to join us in our a little excursion? Or do you have some plans? I nod. Yeah, I just nod. Okay. Okay. Alphonse is really the talker in this group, huh? <laughs> God, what else is new? <laughs> the amount of time right staff and I have just said, I nod. <laughs> yes, it sounds good. Agree. <laughs> Affirmative. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, of note, uh, all four of you are. There are three of us. Let's count that all again. All four. Included. Who's the fourth? I'm the fourth. Okay. The, the <laughs> physics and God also know. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. Uh, institutions uh, by which you may gamble or brawl usually are not open at 10 a.m. I wouldn't. Actually, no, I wouldn't know that. I come from a place where these are open to a person of my pri privilege at my discretion. So hey, all right, I did not yep. know that. Okay, feel free. Feel free to go investigate. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I think at least Illicol knows that, right? I, yeah, it's just like it, you can't really like you're not going to get the A game at the brothel at 10 a.m. either. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say, yeah, I'll say to Alphonse, it is quite early. I, I do not know what you are expecting, but I am, do not imagine they will be open at this hour. Really? It's not, it's not like the, um, the arena in Oblivion. It does not open at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well then, yes, that these, was these my places. plan for the day. <laughs> we, we can go later. Okay. I, I like kind of pat him on the shoulder. He seems kind of upset. Hey, Lacal, you've been here before. Mm -hmm. What do you know of Rory Crossroads? What can we do for a little bit of extra coin? <laughs> hey, I did I... my part. I tipped the dude. <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have discovered something to do at least mid afternoon. I... You got you've got a couple hours to kill. Probably six hours before those places open. I do not what? know that much of the city. When I came through here previously, I had a job. Hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I got nothing. When I was scouting, or not scouting, when I was looking over the city, how uh, busy was the market district? Uh, it is early in the morning, but uh, that is one of the districts that picks up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Um. People are people are moving between between buildings. Everything's open. That's what from what you know. It's not like like all the businesses are closed. Like they like dawn. People wake up in the market district at dawn. Uh, bakers start baking. Like you you notice some smoke. You hear the you hear the occasional ring of a hammer on an anvil. And are there a lot of alleyways in the market district? There are a lot of alleyways in every district in this town. It, it appears that the city. The only organized -y bit of the city that you can tell was the the fisherman's district at first looked like it was like planned and then uh, perhaps like the temple and the uh, park look intentional uh, and where you were in the like military governing area appeared a little more intentional but all of the other districts are very much like like London-esque. It's not New York, it's like London. It's that that spontaneously put up. We're, we're kind of lucky that the, the cities are, sh or the, the um, roads are straight uh, kind of city. I turn to Alphonse and Illicol and I say, if we need to do our own business, we can meet back here in a couple hours. Good. That works for me. Um, I want to go talk to some mages. 
Okay, you would have to, you will have to attempt to find mages. You've already met one person with the talent. Also, you detected magic, and you you noticed that the individual at the bookstore had some talent. Uh, also, when you detected magic, I didn't mention it, but you also you feel Ronald. Ronald is made of magic, mm -hmm. but I assumed you just kind of yeah wrote that off because you're hanging out. There, with there's some things I'm writing off. Yeah. Um, eh. I want to. I don't want to go back to the bookstore. Okay. <laughs> that guy hates you, you. I don't like that guy. <laughs> he doesn't like me. Um, you can. You can er... attempt to, to, to spend some downtime trying to find. Other yeah. Let's talent. just say. Let's just say that's how I want to spend my time. Uh, just uh, so kind of. Are we completely? Kind of all going our own way until like noon, mid afternoon. I mean, um, anyone's more than welcome to come with me, but I feel like it's the equivalent of when you're six years old and you go to like the hardware store with your dad. No, You're that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I like. I'm just gonna follow you around like a lost puppy. Also, if you mentioned mages, I'll probably go with you. Otherwise, I'll just okay. go back to the tavern and drink. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, well, I am actually in a in a town like this. I would like to uh, see if there's any any wizards or mages about. So my 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 end goal was to go to Storm's Fall, but that's on a hunch. I need to talk to somebody who's in the know <laughs> with the the magical network in this in this foreign land and uh, see if I'm on the right track. If anyone would like to join me, uh, I would be happy to allow it. <laughs> I'll go. Okay. Pilot. I walk away. Pilots, pilots on their own. All right. Uh, pilot's, got, so, pi pilot's got some kitties to play with. <laughs> pilot, pilot's gonna do something. Who knows? I'm 100% expecting to be like a kid following their dad in the hardware store. <laughs> um, Alphonse is the father figure of this group. Yeah. <laughs> he holds it together. Alright, Alphonse. Based on your knowledge of the Magi in the class that the Magi occupy, you would guess potentially there there might be someone with talent in the market district who can do like minor enchantments and things. Uh, potentially they could they could do that's that's what you expect like of someone who is selling as a trade uh, their skills. Uh, potentially they could enchant weapons and armor, minor enchantments there. Uh, there could be a spellmonger who who does minor enchantments to keep out pests out of your home, objects found, lost objects found, all that kind of stuff. Uh, could be found in the market district, perhaps even like a fortune teller, uh, someone with that kind of skill. Anybody else who is talented that isn't necessarily peddling it, um, the Magi tend to occupy the upper class, so you could just mm -hmm. investigate... The nice area I'm of going town. There. And I'm going there. I know where not to waste my time, and I've got my uh, I've got my signet ring. I've got like my pedigree. Like I think I can kind of schmooze my way into the upper district. Okay. You know? uh, I think that's my heading. Okay. The I upper... might not be a great help with this. I am just a giant Goliath. That's fine. I, I, I can explain you. It's fine. I got you covered. Has a, Everyone's got. Has a They'll all Bodyguard. understand. They'll all understand. Maybe I'll. Oh, you know what? Alphonse might be reverting a little bit here. This will be fun. Let's do this. This will be fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, from what you can tell, uh, and what you've been told since the kind of like less like. Based on what the individual told you about where to find the, the gambling ring in Fight Club, that's probably not where you want to go. Uh, so from what it sounds like, the, the lower income folks live out along the wall, uh, to the west at least. Um, and from what you guys know of cities, potentially the lower income folks just live, the, that is where the lower income areas are, is right at the edge of town. Uh, what you do notice in this area is uh, the south district appears to be a little more wealthy than uh, the other districts that you've seen. As you went to the Kingsguard outpost, you did notice uh, the west district uh, looked a little less 
high income, lower income, I guess, <laughs> uh, mid to low income. Uh, you've not visited the South District, and as you came into town, uh, right where you first entered town on the east uh, side of town, just looked like a middle income district, and you haven't necessarily seen uh, the area around the temple yet. Mm. So The other know, housing area. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's by a park, uh, it's by a temple. Good it is. neighborhood. Close to the it water. Could it could be. Uh, yeah, so generally you're, you're thinking the West District, probably not the place to go. You've seen a pretty good bit of it in your walk through the city. Market District, definitely not where to go. And the the fishing the fisherman district is appears to be all business. You can even see a lot of that right now. There's there's a market. There's you know what? Um, boats. Let's head towards the the park to like the 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 southeast corner. Okay, are you going to walk through the park? Yeah, it's a nice day. Time to it kill. Is a nice day. That is in fact a nice day. Uh, there are a few clouds in the sky, but it appears to be just on the verge of spring because it is. You walk across the square. It is already fairly busy. There are there are a couple like cleric initiates uh, who are who are talking about various gods. Uh, one appears to be talking about Arathis, who you've heard a spiel about. Uh, another appears to be talking about Corellin. Uh and a couple of people are listening. You know, nothing better to do. Uh, there also appears to be a juggler attempting to like, hey, but it's a little early in the day for a performance. There's like a mom and a kid like watching, uh, but not really a captivated audience. As you enter the park, um, it is, it's like a, it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, it's a little bit of nature within the city. Uh, you follow a cobblestone pathway. Uh, there are a few trees. There's a small fish pond. Uh, there is uh, what appears to be a very well-dressed woman. Uh, I say woman of late middle age uh, who is followed by a uh, gentleman who appears to be potentially her employee. Uh, he is following her. He has like a, like a messenger's bag and a few other things. Uh, and she is just kind of like walking through the park. Uh, there are a couple ducks in the in the fish pond, uh, and she just appears to be out out for a stroll. There are a few other individuals that you you kind of cross along the way. There is a gentleman with a dog, and as you walk through the, the park, I mean, it's I pet the dog. That man is Kaylo. <laughs> that man, yeah, I, it is it is a shepherd shepherding dog uh, that appears to be domesticated. Uh, I pet the you, dog. Uh, <laughs> you, you can Damn, you don't know dog. dog etiquette. No, I, like I approach, I know my, so I walk up, I, I have my palms open um, for the dog to sniff my palms, and then if it's accepting, I will bend over and pet the dog. Uh, yeah, the dog is well trained, you do not need to make an animal handling check. The, the gentleman is like kind of finely dressed and has it, he is leash, uh, and he goes, oh, good morning, how are you? This is Jasper. <laughs> what a good boy. My morning has just gotten much better. Uh, yeah. Ilko is also going to pet the dog. Please. He's is, he is a very sweet dog. He's a good boy. So um, many scratches. Yeah, it's it's, it's, his, it's his dog. Uh, they're, they're out for a morning walk. Uh, the man says, yes, he's, he's uh, very well trained, very good, occasionally barks at the neighbors, but uh, luckily our neighbors are understanding. Ilko's just kind of cooing at the dog. <laughs> good dog. I had a uh, I had a oh, dog must, very similar to this uh, back 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 home. Uh, loved my boy, uh, but it has been a long time since I've seen him. So it is very nice to see a nice smiling face once again. I'm sorry to hear that you were so far from a loved one. We must we must be on our way though. I do have uh, business to take care of later this afternoon, uh, and he begins. Well, he says, Jasper, come on. And Jasper follows. Uh, I say to Alphonse, we have many sheepdog as well in my tribe. Many, many good friends there. I understand missing them. It must be a jolly folk to have a friend like that. I'm sure you must miss home. And he's Sometimes. kind of... 
he's he he kind of he he lost himself for a minute kind of thinking about it but alas uh can i can i like look around and see if there's anyone kind of like more in line with the magi more kind of uh, maybe i could detect magic from here because i feel like we're in the right place yeah so as uh you you head towards like the south east part of the park uh you do notice the housing uh bordering the park is like these people have yards mm -hmm. they're they're a little more fancy like they have they have land in the city a little bit um and there are some like fancier townhouses well decorated things like that um what you you can detect magic uh what is the range on detect magic well actually um do i do i notice anything kind of from there like maybe a, like a some kind of signet of a guild or I'm not sure how how exactly the mages are set up in this land make an investigation check as you just kind of walk through the the nicer area of the city uh that's a 15. A 15. You do not notice anything that would appear to be a mage's guild, uh, but as you are walking, you do notice at one house, uh, it has it has a like a, a wrought iron fence. Potentially would act as a barrier to a thief trying to get to the house. Maybe not. Depends how good the thief was. And um, there is a gate, uh, but you do notice as you're walking past the gate, uh, there is a faint like tingle in the air and also you notice there are some runes etched on uh the like two center pieces of the gate perfect and looking at them uh it appears to be uh like a spell of locking like it is a it is a guard spell or uh potentially an alarm spell should someone open the gate that is not meant to uh the alarm will go off right okay um mm -hmm. The house is is a nice house. It's not like a, a it's not like a drop dead gorgeous house. It's not like when you you drive you go through a neighborhood and you're like like you drive through that fancy neighborhood and you pretend what it would be like to like <laughs> live there. You're like yeah, I bet this house has seven bedrooms, a pool, and a tennis court. And this is like a it's a nicer house. It might have like four or five bedrooms, maybe it's two stories, not like a colonial maybe. <laughs> uh nice facade out front couple shrubs little bird bird uh bird bath kind of cute all right so i'm trying to think of like how to you know not set off the alarm because i oh, think also I... as you know it's on the, the side of the gate there's two so it's two stone pieces that are connected by a metal gate and you notice those runes on the far stone piece what you can see is what would be like a mailbox and there is what just appears to be a button okay i press the button <laughs> uh from what you can tell nothing happens i press the button again <laughs> <laughs> uh to your perception again nothing happens and one more time for luck yeah <laughs> Um, as you're you're pushing it, you like push. Nothing. Push. Nothing. Push. As you're pushing it that that third time, you like. You hear kind of a flurry of, oh shut up, and like this this flustered noises, and it's like what and like someone like a someone dressed as a butler is like what and they like you you see them and they they come out out the front door and they they hurry up to the gate and say can i help you you might and he, and he flustered and and like untied and like did i what early morning <laughs> i I'm, I'm just gonna try to play this off <clears throat> sorry to disturb you uh is the master of the house at home? Yes, and he is quite disturbed by you ringing the bell. 
and I kind of look at Ilkal and I just kind of like slap him across the chest. I told you to only ring the bell once. <laughs> Make a deception check. You're the one standing by the bell. Uh, Ilkal <laughs> also looks confused and a little bit angry. <laughs> uh, that's a 12. <laughs> Come on. He goes, fine, fine. He goes, what business do you have with the master of the house? Uh, shoot. Um, I've noticed the the ruins of, of protection on, on the gate, and I was... I believe that I may have some information uh, that may be interesting to the to the master of the house, if if he would have me. And some questions. Inform information? Hmm. Wait here. And he, he goes back to my house. He does not let you in. Uh, go, like, uh, like as he go, rushes back to the 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 front of the house, you see him stop, and he like adjusts and like he, he like cinches some things, and he opens the front door. Like you see him take like a composure breath, and he he steps into the house, and a minute goes by. I I look over at Ilka and I I kind of apologize. I'm like, I'm sorry about that. These people will be a little bit different. <laughs> I I understand. Two minutes go by. A third minute goes by. And on the fourth minute, you see the front door open. And the gentleman comes out. And he says, Master Southwind is intrigued by a messenger this early in the morning, claiming to have information that would be of interest to him. You may follow me. And he he takes out a key. Make a perception check. Uh, 15. Okay. It'll call. No. It'll, it, no. It'll call's right. not paying that close attention. It'll, it'll call not paying attention. Takes out a key. Uh, it just appears to be like a very, very well, nice, like a nice key. Uh, and he touches it to the gate. He doesn't actually unlock that that is the other thing you notice is there's no like insertion and unlock it is just touch the gate the gate unlocks and he opens the door he says please come in i'll escort you to the master's parlor do you do you enter oh absolutely we're in the right place yeah. closes closes the gate touches the key to the gate gate again you uh alphonse feel the the slight snap of uh something occurring uh, and he escorts you back to the front door he holds the front door open uh, for you two to enter and you enter into a mid-size manor home uh, in the entryway there is there's a, is a, is a full size entryway uh, it's a nice home it is well lit uh, there are two staircases leading to the second floor there appear to be other branches out and about uh, to um, go as we were waiting at the gate, um, I po like I, I took off my signet ring and I was polishing the crap out of it okay. off, on my cloak. <laughs> um, I've uh, made note of that. Okay. Uh, the he escorts you uh, along along the first floor down the right corridor. Don't know you don't you're not sure if that's east or west or north or south the right from as you enter uh, down to uh, the end of the hallway and on the left uh, he stops and he says what shall I announce you as? And he looks at you Lord Vario and of no importance fine uh so he he opens the Ilical door. Ilical like opened his mouth to say something. He's just so out of his element. <laughs> He's aware you are not put together I don't appropriately. Fit in. Yeah. You are not. You do not belong here. He opens the door and he it's says, vibing. "Master Southwind, uh, to see you, uh, Lord Vario and his associate, who is of no importance." He he steps back back out and he says. And he says, uh, you hear, show them in. 
and he steps out and he says, Manta. And he, he like stink eyes you, Alphonse. Like this is like or uh Illicall. Like he is like just a normal sized guy, but he gives you like the don't don't touch anything, don't break anything, don't be a nuisance, don't speak. He gives you the look of like <laughs> like you're gonna be the problem. Illicall is very used to this. I'm so also I'm you as far as he knows, you're the one who rang the doorbell. Multiple times. <laughs> yes. God damn it, Kalo. <laughs> Master Southwind, is it? Uh, as you you enter the the parlor, it is. Um, mm. It's it's less like a parlor. It's more like a solar. Um, there there's plenty of light. There is a large, but there is a large desk or sit study, whatever it is. Uh, there's there are two high back chairs. Uh, they're kind of facing each other. There's a small table. Uh, there, are, there are a few bookshelves ab- amongst the room. Uh, a piano or harpsichord, maybe. <laughs> uh, and in one of them is sitting a elderly elven gentleman. Is there anything in this room that I notice immediately that I can just start talking about? Like something that would be impressive to know something about? <sighs> There is make a perception check to scan the room. That's uh, a thirteen. Uh, you notice you notice the harpsichord or piano potentially. You uh, you can't tell which one it is based on that perception roll. You also see a globe and like a like a big globe, not like like on a desk globe, like mm-hmm. a full size globe. Hell yeah! And there is a ship in a bottle on the mantle mm. and of course there, there's a fireplace ship in a bottle and there's there's a very dramatic painting of something you you don't know what it is it's a it's a like a forest scene there appear to be a few like and possibly like a king and some other stuff like you're you're unsure you, you it is it is a reference to something that you are unaware of in this world's history Okay, but there is a elven gentleman who goes. Please have a seat. How can I help you? Um, you say you have some information for me that could be of interest. That remains to be seen. You seem like a very well, well studied individual, and I, I, I removed my hat as we were coming in and handed it to Illical and just kind of like fixed my hair a little bit and like accentuated my ears because I noticed that he was an elf. Just I, I know that that probably doesn't matter much. Um, just just to get that point across and um, I'm just standing in the corner holding Alphonse's hat <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have a seat I don't know well, what to do it here remains to be to seen here. and he he like he's wearing a watch which is really it's pretty high tech um which it's either that means it's either magical or incredibly expensive uh only the uh, gnomes are capable of making like the technical, like a technical watch uh, that would run off like quartz or something. Uh, he does. He looks at it. It is a gold watch, and he looks at it and he says, "Well, as it remains to be seen, I see that you have about two minutes worth of my time before I ask you impolite or politely to leave, and three minutes before I ask you impolitely to leave. So I would get to starting." Any time now. And is that three minutes as per your tri-moonal time? Or is that on a more astral plane? <laughs> I'm trying to sound super fancy. I don't know what to say. I'm just trying to <laughs> allude to his world not being the only world and hoping that kind of piques his interest. Okay. Okay. I get, what you're, I, get what, yeah. I get what you're putting down. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Make a persuasion check. See how that goes over. Um, oh, you know what? That's a ten. That's okay. You you don't bumble as as much as you 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 bumble more than you want to, but not as much as you probably should. <laughs> um, uh, he is. He's like, well, at least you're studied. He kind of he looks you up and down. And he goes. 
You appear to be like you were from wealth, but it looks like someone dragged you through the woods to get here. The only dragging was done by myself and perhaps a colleague. I... I'm just looking to have a conversation. Well, then converse. What is what is of interest to you? And he checks his time again, and I like he's he's unimpressed. You could be, you could be someone that that robbed a wealthy person for all he can really tell. Mm -hmm. I come from a land where magic is much more plentiful, but much more powerful. You with your trinket there is the most magic I've seen in this realm. Ooh. And I'm kind of, I'm trying to like pass off that like I'm not impressed with it, but like, cool, you can tell time. I can look out a window. <laughs> but like, this is not really great. And he's kind of obviously trying to flaunt it a little bit. He's like, cool, you gotta watch. Nice. Okay. Uh, so you're you're not being nice. I mean, I'm sure. I'm, I'm being like you're... charismatic about it, and I, I guess I'm gonna have to make a check for that. But yes. Like... Um. So you're trying to imply like, hey, I, I'm unimpressed by your 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 little magic thing. I'm here to talk. I'm here to talk magic. Mm -hmm. What? Like. Either you, you can take me seriously for a second, or and you also have implied that you're not from this world. So either you can... If he's picked that up, that's that's a good starting point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, make a... Make another, make another persuasion check. Uh, another 15. Okay, fairly good. Yeah, 15. He... He looks at you and he says, Hmm. This is the most magic you've seen, huh? And he says, he stands up and he... He makes a word and he snaps his fingers. And Illichal, this is what you see. Um, standing, the gentleman stands up kind of aggressively. And he makes, makes a gesture with his hand and he snaps. And as he does that, in front of him, he it appears to be he's a little taller than uh, this gentleman. He's a he's an older elvish male, graying gray white hair. I would say just gray, not like perfectly white. Uh, he stands up and he snaps, and his entire appearance changes, and his ears shorten a little. His, his face lines out. He grows a beard. Uh, and on top of his head becomes a tattered hat and a perfectly clean blue and gold robe. And in front of Alphonse stands Alphonse, <laughs> except clean and well put together and freshly groomed. Uh, Alphonse, you see a mirror image of your own personal perception of yourself. Like this is you in the mirror back home. Mm hmm. And he says, and you have not explored very well if this is the... And he holds up, and on Alphonse's wrist is this watch. And he <laughs> says, you have not explored very well. If this is the most... If this trinket, as you say, is the most magic you have seen. And you would be correct. I'm not a woodsman. And I was dropped in the woods. <laughs> Clearly, and uh, he does like a little little act. He does like a little wave, and um, off your shoulder is plucked a leaf uh, from out of, from nothing, and it appears to float in front of you, and it drops and it falls down onto the floor. He Am says, I allowed to do Maybe... sleight of hand magic too? Because that's not a trick. <laughs> that's a that's a parlor trick. That was <laughs> that was mage hand. Okay. Um. And he looks you up and down and says, Now you've implied a greater knowledge of the universe in knowing that our world is not alone. But where does that make you from, I wonder? And how did you get into my parlor? Or how did you happen to be walking down my street 
and so seem to interrupt my breakfast and so disturb my butler. <laughs> um, sorry, so he's asking where, well, the, the runes on your gate, I thought were impressive. You had me not wanting to ring your bell <laughs> or touch your gate. That is why my my colleague here had to do that for me. I come from, a, actually, uh, side note, did we dec decide where I was from? And would that mean anything to anyone? Um, you are from your world? No, it does not mean anything to anyone. Okay. Um, I was sent here through a portal through time and space. I look up at your stars and I see nothing. And you know, you know, in our, in our cast, we spend much of our time observing the stars, observing the signs, observing the seasons and the time passing. Your time here makes no sense to me. I am looking to meet someone and be pointed in the right direction of someone who, who can explain to me why my abilities have been diminished so greatly and whether or not I can find a way home. You see, you see a broken man standing in front of you, but as you have just dis demonstrated, this is but a husk. He looks you over, says, interesting. Yes. All right, then. And uh, he, he snaps his fingers again. His appearance goes back to normal. Olsen, come here. And from the hallway, it'll call you. Get, the man pushes the other way, and uh, the, the butler comes to me and says, would like two glasses of tea, please? He looks at you and says, how do you take your tea? Three sugars and a dab of... Yeah? Uh... Uh, uh, and a dab of honey. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, some sweet tea. Tea cup, four inches tall. Perfect. <laughs> Three sugars and honey. <laughs> tea for myself and the guest, please. And all of a sudden, heads off. Uh, and he sits down, and the individual says. All right, you have bought a little more of my time as you appear to have come. You appear not to be lying to me and you appear to be interesting for the moment at least. What I can tell you is I am not of the class that you think I am as I am not a wizard. All of my talent is purely born, born with my talent. Uh, no studying for me. And he, he smiles like a, a pretty big, but not like doesn't reach his eyes kind of smile. He says, also, uh, I am not originally from this country. My family is uh, from the capital city of Ian Alar, to the south of the Storm Range Mountains. I am from a lesser branch of the family, and hence why I have come here to do business. And I manage our family's business in the reaches. Well, I manage our family's business in this part of the reaches. And he, he's like, the whole time he is, he is adjusting, he's like adjusting his clothes and he, he's like, He's making himself a little more, more fancy. And he says, And I handle trade through the Northwest. If you're looking for answers of major magical aspects, I cannot help you there. I am not a scholar. I'm a trader and a businessman. And all of the magic I know has come by naturally. 
But I do know if you are looking to meet those of the more studious nature, uh, there is a gentleman in this town uh, who goes by the name of Godric, who spends his time buried in books about the arcane and the astral. Also, if you are on the way to Storm's Fall or further south across the mountain ranges, perhaps my family could be of some use to you. The Storm, the Southwind family, the Southwind, uh, not clan, but the Southwind like family, family. Uh, and he says you their name in uh, Elvish, mm. which is I cannot pronounce currently. <laughs> I have to I have to look up the translation. They speak they're speaking of the South Wind. Like generally he goes by South Wind here, uh, but the actual South Wind family is it is an elvish term for South Wind. Uh, but it appears he, he goes by South Wind uh, for purposes of dealing with humans. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the common tongue. Common tongue. Uh, you do recognize the word South Wind and Elvish though. You have provided me some entertainment this morning. I wish to hear the rest of your story, and perhaps I can write you a letter of introduction to my family in Storm's Fall, or perhaps uh, Olsen can show you to where uh, Godric makes his bed. Other than that, I'm afraid I can't help much. And he like half smiles, like, like it's like he's sorry, sorry he can't, but he's not too sorry. Mm-hmm. He's like, nah, best I can do for you. Of the little help I've come across, that would be grand. Do Good. you say that you come from traders? What is south of south? What do you find beyond the Storm Range Mountains? He stands up he's not he's done being flamboyant and he brings over a globe the globe that is sitting it's actually mm-hmm. on casters it's on wheels and he gestures to you and he says we're here in the reaches currently <laughs> my good man everything <laughs> is to the south and he gestures to the rest of the northern continent and you see picked out on the globe there there are other major cities and there are ma- huge forests and lakes and oceans and a whole southern continent, which has has markings of uh, different bits, and there there are islands scattered throughout the seas. Uh, and it appears, he said, "You are merely scratching the surface of this world here. <laughs> we are at the edges of civilization." And he says that, and he gets really like stern and like make an insight check. Uh, Ilikal, if you you were watching, uh, make an insight check as well. Alrighty, six. So I've got a uh, fourteen. Uh, you don't. You don't pick up much from his demeanor of it. Then he says, "You you are barely scratching the surface of civilization here." Sounds like he like drew the short straw to be up here, like potentially. Yeah. Okay. Um. Can I like spin the globe just to like kind of hopefully to see if maybe like I know. My globe, you know, your globe, yeah. Spin it, no, <laughs> nothing. And I, I kind of deflate a little bit, just like that is very interesting. So, so there are just the two continents on the globe. There are two major continents, uh, and then the Shattered Isles off of the northern continent, and then there are also speckles of islands and other things. Mm, okay. Archipelagos, nothing, nothing that would equal another continent necessarily okay. um, so Storm's Fall is the seat of the king tis would would the king keep a court of mages <laughs> of mages no uh, as far as I know the king has an arcanist aside from what wizards and sorcerers live in the capital city doing their business. Uh, the king's arcanist, uh, though I've never met him, appears to be fairly knowledgeable on a little bit of everything. He is the king's magical advisor. 
I've never had contact with him, though. And your family in Stormsfall may have, is what you were saying? Potentially. They do much more major business. Uh, they've dealt with the royal royal court once or twice. Well, a letter of introduction and uh, a point in the right direction of Godric would be most helpful. As you've had this conversation, your tea was brought to you. Okay. Sip it. Um, that, that can be done. Said, but I do have business to attend to. He, and he says, Olsen, uh, my study letter of introduction for them uh, to, to my cousin. And take them uh, to, to Godric's home. Or at least show them, give them directions at least. And push back my noon appointment by half an hour. I have some thinking to do. And Olsen, the, the butler, says, follow me. And he looks at the call and just blows you off. Fall, step out. You go into uh, the entryway, and there is a, like, a cupboard. And he, he pulls it up. And a, like, a notice is scratched. Da, 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 da. Uh, Olsen slips off a ring that he's wearing. He melts some wax. He seals seals the note. He goes, your letter. Let me just hold out to you. I take it. Thank you. He goes, and he takes out takes out a piece of paper, and he says, "Godric lives in the southern district at uh, this address." And he, he kind of does like a little sketch of the southern district, and it's it's like three blocks in from the from the south road. It's about midway down the southern district. He kind of does like a quick sketch, and he says, "I'm not taking you all the way there. The master has appointments. Thank you and good day." The door will let you out, <laughs> or the gate will let you out, and a pleasant day to you as well. Of course. Right. Okay, and I will say that is how you two spend uh, your free time in the morning. Pilot, what are you trying to do? Since you've been... Uh, I wander to the market district. Okay, you're in the market um, district. I would like to slip between the alleyways and all that to see if there's any unexpected or unexpecting and or rowdy person who might not notice that their wallet has been taken away. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Um, as you slip through the, the alleys, the multitude of alleys and streets of the Market District, the alleys are relatively empty, empty except uh, for a couple of beggars or drunks that are uh, completely passed out. They do not appear to have any coin on them. Um, but uh, there does appear to be a younger, elvish-born woman who is just leaving a shop with an attendant. Uh, so, so you're coming out of the alley, and there's a shop on your right, and a younger elven woman uh, appears to be talking, and she... She turns around and she's talking to the people and says, and it was just such a lovely day and he's such a lovely boy and I just don't know if I care to deal with him though. He's just so, so boring. And you see at her waist, she does have what appears to be a small uh, coin purse. It is it's very fancy. It's out there in the open. Um, does the drunk people on the ground have any glass, like mead bottles with them? Yeah, uh, in the alleyway there is there's one guy who's just completely passed out, and it's like a it's like a jug of something. Um, I take the jug and act very drunk. Okay, uh, make a deception check. That's a twenty five. That is, you appear to be very drunk, and as you 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 got the sway just right, you. You spill a little bit. You step out. Are you are you attempting to steal the purse? It, is it like a how big is the purse? Purse like it's it's like a coin coin purse. Okay. It's not like a shoulder bag purse. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I am purse. gonna try to steal it. Yeah, you you stumble, you stumble out of the alley. You even like shield your eyes from the sun. Your eyes don't adjust to that darker light. 
you like do like you had like you have pupils to deal with and uh you you bump into her and you splash this gross just it's, it's like pure liquor you splash it up and it spills across her dress and you sorry sorry and make a sleight of hand check to steal the purse with advantage uh because of your performance as a drunk uh sleight of hand is a 23 that is enough uh as you splash you oh hi how dare you what you get away you drunkard and um it appears uh someone she whoever she was talking to it like there's like an older woman who was like oh dear me oh no and uh possibly like a manservant or something like comes and like pushes says get out of here you vagabond go go and like he just kind of shoves you like he shoves you hard and pushes you down down the street a little bit and you hear them like fussing over her dress and things i clean purse um keep acting drunk until i reach the end of the road or at least i i know that they i'm out of sight of them and i slip back into another alley yep i walk a little further down Mm. in a darker alley away from them and i count it okay you get the you discover in this coin purse 25 gold six silver and two copper all right nice all right that is enough for today i don't need any more coins at the moment okay i would like to scout the city a little more in-depthly okay um i will say for in-depthly you can do one district um i would like to uh go through the bottom right hand side where the other housing are and the temple and the park okay make a investigation check investigation is a 11 okay um it is uh it is fairly nice housing uh around the inside of the district towards the park and towards the temple uh there are a few manor houses with yards and lawns i should say and gates and fences uh a couple three-story houses um the temple is a temple of is a temple of the moon goddesses uh who are named for each of the moons uh so it has as you you walk by like the front of it you see the three moons uh are it's depicted i guess would be the best way way to say uh on the on the front facade of the temple there are a few like not as nice houses there's a row of townhouses that are nice but like it's upper middle class uh because you don't get a yard as you get to the uh the the wall it is all just middle class homes uh nothing fancy very few alleys and things out there through here though it is mostly like townhomes and things along that nature uh there could be everybody kind of has a fireplace uh, you do pass by uh, the home of uh, the Southwind family uh, here, but you do not know who they are. So you do pass pass down the street, but where where Illicall and Alphonse are, but you are unaware. Uh, you do see a few few different places where it appears people have like buzzers or doorbells kind of thing. Uh, you don't know where what they are. Um, there is one very fancy house uh kind of in the like center of the district from the park to the wall um doesn't appear to have any i guess it has on on the gate is an embossed w uh but that is about all you find you you get a a general idea like you could you could find your way through this district again should you want to uh can i go to the temple of the moon sister or moon goddesses? Yes, absolutely. Um, is it busy inside at all? It is not. Uh, they tend to do. It is almost midday. It is like the least busy time for this temple. Oops. How many people are inside? Can I tell it, from the outside? Uh, from the outside, the doors are closed. Okay. 
So you'd have to actually uh, go up and like go in. Is there there's no windows at all? There are windows, but they're stained glass. Ah, uh, okay. Um can I walk around the temple to see if there's anything inside? Or is there any other way inside besides the front doors? Uh sure. As you walk around the temple, there is a graveyard, there is a little there's like foliage and things. Um, there appears to be a back door. Uh, is kind of in back right. Is it locked? Maybe south. No. Mm-hmm. Opens. And what kind of room do I enter into, or do I open to? It is. It's kind of like an in- entry, like a house entryway, like a mud room kind of thing. Like there, there appear to be a few like pairs of boots. Um, it is it is a small room. There's a couple like cloaks hung up, and then four to six feet in is is another door. I stealth my way through and see what's check. what's behind the other door. Stealth is a nine. Okay. Uh, as you and you're like kind of looking around, step step step. Uh, you hear hear someone uh from in the next room over go. Adam, is that you? It's about time you got back. I close the door and quickly run out, back out and hide in the bushes. <laughs> Yeet. Um. You hear, Adam. Uh-huh. Your your door open. Oh, must be the wind. Uh-huh. And you hear hear door close. It they no one actually looked outside. Uh, and you remained hidden. I'll say that is that's gonna be like you you did you you mapped out in your brain an entire district. Yeah. Uh so that will be how you spent your time. Of course. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's noon. You you meet back. At the blooming cedar at noon, this is lunchtime. You can you can have a quick meal. Mm-hmm. They have meals. How I'm many meals did we get with our room again? You get three meals a day. Sweet. Did you pay? You paid for two nights stay, right? Yeah. We paid okay, for one so far. Paid for one. Um, yeah. If you pay for your your second night, you that includes lunch. That would include lunch into it. I mean, we're gonna be we staying have... anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it was three silver pieces. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you you have lunch. It is it is great. It's refreshing. It's it's quality, and uh, you can go on about whatever pursuits you would like to go about in the afternoon. Me and yeah. Ronald communicate pay... however you wish. Sorry, I'll pay for the uh the the second night. Oh, oh nice. Because you paid for the first one. Sweet. All right. Yeah. So we met we met back up with with Ronald. Yeah. Yes. Shall we grab some lunch? That was a rather interesting conversation, and I am quite hungry. Um, before we go into the the inn, I hand over five gold pieces to each, to Alphonse and Illicol. Ronald hands you five gold pieces each. Just... Ronald, what is this? Somebody's been busy. I found a quick job. Well, thank you. You 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 do not have to do this. You earned this. It'll call literally more money than you had starting the campaign. <laughs> no, the same amount. Same amount, just there you go. <laughs> For you. Well, thank you, Ronald. Thank you very much. Just in case, you know, backup is important. Okay. So what do we go inside and grab some food? Yep, grab food. Um, different waiter than you had in the morning. This is just a, a waitress now. Just a young lady appears to be making ends meet. This is her job. Uh, serves you. They have a multitude of things for lunch. We're not going to go into the menu for lunch. <laughs> uh, Man, there you go. 
Where's my like, immersion? <laughs> if you would like for me to describe the entire luncheon meal to you, I shall. I may but... cut it. <laughs> we uh, eat some lunch. It's good. For the ask, yes, for the interest of time, lunch. You have lunch. Yeah. It happened. Um uh, can I so uh if as as she's kind of giving us our food, um Hello there. Uh there was there was a man serving us this morning who had some interesting markings on his wrist. Would you happen to know anything about that? Markings on a wrist. No, I'm not not familiar with that. There there are a few gentlemen wait staff who are here in the morning. There there's David and Ulrich and Rolf, I believe. And then there's our, our morning bartender. Uh, Alex, but I'm not a, not aware of any markings on wrists. Okay. Okay. I didn't get his name, so I literally I have no leg to stand on. <laughs> yeah, and you have lunch. It's yep. good. What do you? What would you like to do with your afternoon? Do now that was see? phenomenal. What would you like to do with your afternoon? <laughs> Um, about what time would the the gambling dens and stuff open? Probably like four p.m. just before dinner time. Okay. They probably serve. It's 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 probably not like just a gambling den. Like it's a it's like yeah, a it's like a, a tap room. They push some tables aside and yeah, yeah, yeah. They probably have like they probably do food too. Like, mm. probably, um, got like a, probably got like a really good order of nachos or something. <laughs> really watered yeah. down drinks. Uh, so I'll say to Alphonse, um. Well, I believe we still have some time if you would like to see that that gentleman you were referred to. Ah, Godric. Yes. That seems like a good use of our time. Okay. You head out of the tavern. You head south out of the square. You go down about midway down the south road. Uh, it takes 15 to 20 minutes to get there. If you're walking, you walk in. Uh, there is, there appears to be like a house. It's got... It's got weird. It's got like weird nighttime motif, like stars and moon and stuff like on the facade. It it stands out as odd in and of itself. You walk up to the front door. It is like a row of like townhomes. It's not. It's not like houses. It's like a, a whole like apartment kind of thing. Uh, there's a front door, and on the front door is a half half moon. No quarter crescent, crescent. moon. Yeah, one. Thank you. There's a crescent moon. Uh, Okay, it looks like someone's branded and it's carved into the door. Uh, the house appears dark, though. Do you? Or are you just like, I'm going in this guy's house. All right, so yeah, I, I knock on the door. I can wait. No answer. Knock on the door again. I stand, I back up very far from the door. <laughs> I, Alphonse is between me and the door, very clearly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm not really... Call expecting the door to explode, I guess. <laughs> no, I don't want to be blamed again. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. Anyway, uh -huh. and, Won't be fooled again. I, I, I look back, I'm like, come on. <laughs> and then I knock on the door one more time. Do things in threes, apparently. No answer. Pierce is not home. But this definitely looks like the house of, a, of someone who would have some knowledge of the astral plane. Okay. Um, I pull out a piece of paper from my uh, scholar's pack, my quill, and a little thing of ink. Uh, and I start writing a very um, hastily but very neatly written letter mm -hmm. uh, that says, Godric. I am looking to inquire on some of your on your understanding of the astral plane I believe that you and I need to speak and learn more about the and I, and I need to learn more about your understanding of not only the great wheel but the Astral Sea. 
find Alphonse. Uh, and, and you you may find me uh, staying at the well, is it the blossoming pine? Blooming, Blooming cedar. cedar. That's the one. You can find it. It. Imagine. <laughs> Just write that. The blossoming, blossoming pine. pine. <laughs> Let's see if he knows. Um, oh, yeah. So Blooming Cedar, uh, room 47. I will be staying there um, over the next night. Uh, if you have time, I would appreciate a chat. Find Alphonse. And then I just, I, I don't know. Do I, do I... I kind of put it in the crack of the door, so it's like it's stuck in the there, and it's not going to like go anywhere. But he'll see it as soon as he comes home. <laughs> like it's like, <laughs> like when like door to door salespeople That's like it. shove flyers in your doors, yeah. and you're like, why? Yeah. yeah. All right. I just leave it for the elements to take it. <laughs> um. This has taken forty minutes, ish. Uh, it is approaching. It is. We'll say. You can you can bit bop around town all you want for a little bit. Uh if you guys want if you want to. Montage. Yeah. Now Ronald, uh I was wondering, we do have some time. How did you come across this money? And is there is there another job we could do? No, I'm sorry. I'm good. <laughs> I just wanna I'm feeling out how the hell he got this money, because that's a lot of money. It's a good amount. I was walking through an alley. And an elderly lady asked for help, and she gave me a generous sum of money. That is generous. <laughs> At least 15 gold <laughs> we can just do. Yeah, if, if Ronald split it evenly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's uh, lightning is not going to strike twice there. <laughs> what, you're just going to believe me? <laughs> yeah. Yep. You, you appear to be honest. You Wait, can I can I roll percent? Can I can I can I roll? You can roll insight. Roll insight versus yeah, deception. Versus deception. Let's do it. Why not? Nope, that's a ten. Says, I think you're gonna says, win I'm this one. In deception, Adam. <laughs> I rolled. Uh, I can't do math right now for some reason. I did what? roll a sixteen for deception. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yep, you're good. Well, we believe. Can you. I roll an insight? Yes. Yeah. I probably won't get better than that, but I can try. Yeah, yeah, no. Roll it. Pilot wins. Yeah. Uh, so you guys, you bebop around town. Bebop. There's no other uh, potential to be had <laughs> uh, for little old ladies giving out giant purses of gold for small jobs. Um, time passes. It becomes mid-afternoon. You are, you, you assume, places of more ill repute will begin to open soon. The sun is lower in the sky, approaching sunset. You don't have to go to the gambling hall fight club. I want to. I do. <laughs> I'm good yep. at cards. I'm yep. Are you? I'm proficient in cards. Yeah, does being proficient in cards make you, like, better at poker? We'll see. Does that give you better luck? <laughs> I have a set of dice in my inventory. <laughs> I don't think that helps me, though. Okay. Um, do we want to bring this up to Pilot? Because they weren't there when we heard about this. Wait, did we tell I them? I think I, yeah, we, we told Pilot about it already. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, he we want to go to this place. That... And you nodded. <laughs> oh, right. You told me that you guys had plans, but I just assumed that I'm just going to go with you guys. Okay. Yeah.